am a biologist. Um, when I tell people that I'm a biologist, uh, many assume that I do experiments with mice and that I'm trying to find a cure for cancer or some other human disease. Now, when I tell people that I'm a plant biologist, they kind of look at me funny and say, especially around here, they say, why plants when you really should be working on curing some human disease? And so today, I'm going to talk about why I think studying plants, and in my case, studying the butterfly weed plant, is indeed a valuable and worthy endeavor and something that we can all learn from. In particular, I want to talk about the interconnectedness of all organisms, okay? And even though I study one plant, I'm gonna talk about the connections, the really interesting and somewhat unexpected connections that all living organisms have with one another. In the case with butterfly weed, I wanna talk about the connections, well, obviously, as the name implies, with butterflies but also perhaps with organisms like deer and, of course, even us, right? So how did I get into this, right? I, it's not as if I grew up on a farm or anything like that. I actually grew up in New York City, right? Um, and in Queens, in fact. And so we had some house plants um, in our seventh floor apartments, and, uh, and there was, of course, salad, right? But that's where my mind was <laughs> in terms of plants. So it wasn't really until I got to college, right, that I uh, went to a college in a pre-rural area, and I was like, wow, it's beautiful around here, it's green and lush, kind of like this campus. And I thought, wow, what are these organisms, right? And so I actually took some classes in plant biology and that's when my mind was really open to the one, these groups of organisms that I really hadn't really thought about. And I learned that, wow, these organisms, they're so similar on that fundamental level to all organisms, like animals, yet so different. And so that's where I realized this is what I wanted to spend my life doing. That's what I found my passion. And hopefully you'll be able to find your passion in whatever, um, in, in whatever you find. And so I got my degree um, in biology, and, but I wasn't done, and so I went on. And I went on to graduate school and got my PhD in plant biology, studying pollination in uh, the canola plant, interestingly enough. But what does this have to do with butterfly weed? Well, um, the butterfly weed project didn't start until I actually got up here and became a professor at Iona College. I was taking my botany class on a field trip to a place called Marshlands Conservancy in Rye, New York, and I actually started just a serendipitous conversation with a curator there, the then curator there, Alison Bell, and she mentioned that there was this plant called butterfly weed that was growing in their managed meadow there, and that, wow, this is a really interesting plant because she hadn't really seen this plant um, elsewhere. And so I thought, okay, I'll kind of take a look into it. And I realized, wow, this is a really interesting plant, something that I could really get my teeth into and really study. And so what is this plant? Well, you can see there's two pictures of the plant, okay, right there. And you can see, number one, the beautiful orange flowers associated with the plant, right? And so, um, in fact, you can actually buy this plant, right? Right, in garden stores and you can plant them. Um, and so you can use them in your own gardens, right? Now this plant belongs to the milkweed family. Okay, we'll talk about milkweeds in a little bit. And they grow up to about a height of about two or three feet. They're perennials, right? And so they're really beautiful. Now what's the connection to butterflies, obviously? And these are called butterfly weed. Obviously, it doesn't look like much of a weed at all. They're actually quite lovely, right? Um, but the connection to the butterflies. So butterflies, obviously, they pollinate um, the plant, and so the plant gets something out of it. But the butterflies, including that, especially that of the monarch butterfly, they lay their eggs on the underside of the leaves, and when the eggs hatch, the larvae actually use the leaves as a food source. They eat the leaves, okay, and so they can utilize the leaves for food. But there's more to it than that, okay? In fact, the leaves, right, the plant, um, uh, forms these chemicals, and the chemicals are actually usually toxic to most animals, but instead for the butterflies, those toxins get incorporated into their own bodies, and they use those toxins as a way to defend themselves against other predators. And so this really interesting connection between that of the butterfly weed and that of the butterflies. Now, butterflies aren't the only uh, plant animals that pollinate. There's actually bees that pollinate, there's flies 
flies, beetles um, also pollinate this particular plant. So there's a lot of thing, a lot of organisms that this butterfly weed, this plant, is um, associated with. Okay. So what else, right? And why did I get into this project? Well, the reason why I first started getting into this project was because when I looked, it actually turns out that this plant is actually disappearing in the Northeast United States. This plant normally grows, right, in the con mo in most of the contiguous United States from east of the Rocky Mountains. Um, but they're disappearing in the Northeast. In the 1950s, right, um, uh, there was a scientist named Wyatt, and he actually separated out the species into three different subspecies. There was a subspecies on the East Coast, there was a subspecies in the Southeast, and there was a subspecies, subspecies the dominant form, in the interior of the United States. And so I was kind of curious, wow, if this plant is disappearing in the Northeast, well, how do we then, can we introduce this plant back to where it normally was in the Northeast? And in fact, it's actually a protected plant in five states, including that of New York State, so it's actually disappearing in New York State. So if we're trying to reintroduce this plant, what can we do? Should we preserve, try to preserve what's already here to reintroduce the plant back into the Northeast? Or can we just go ahead and plant any butterfly weed from anywhere, whether it be from the Southeast or the uh, Midwest, and then just go ahead and introduce it? And so what was I looking at? Well, are these plants genetically distinct from one another? Are there really three subspecies associated with this species? So Wyatt actually uh, determined those subspecies based on just leaf shape. And I thought, well, maybe there needs to be something more. So I actually took a look at the genetics of this plant. Okay, so I took some samples, right, from uh, a number of populations, but these are the six that I uh, started off with from throughout the United States, and I took a look at their DNA, okay? And so when I did, I actually found that, yes, plants that are growing, say, in Tennessee, right, those plants are more genetically related to each other than in, say, uh, compared to a plant in New York. Okay, and so that makes sense. However, and this is preliminary data, however, every once in a while we'll come upon a plant, say in Tennessee, that was more genetically similar to a plant in New York than to other plants in Tennessee. In other words, two plants that are hundreds of miles apart, that are more related to each other, more genetically similar to a plant that was, say, 20 feet from that particular plant. So what's going on? How is that possible that you can have such genetic similarity to plants that are so far apart, right, as compared to plants that are nearby? Well, we'll think about it, right? So. If you know anything about some of these pollinators of the butterfly weed, like the monarch butterfly, the monarch butterfly has huge migra migratory ranges. In fact, the, mi the migration of the monarch monarchs go from all the way to Canada, all the way down to Mexico, and back again. Okay, and so my research is saying, hey, wow, these monarchs may be carrying pollen for hundreds of miles so that they'll be picking up pollen, say, in Tennessee, and then carrying it all the way to New York and allowing for reproduction and pollination in New York so that we can get this really intermixing of genetic material throughout the entire country. And so this connection is really, really important. And so the Butterflies utilize the butterfly weed as a food source, but the butterfly weed is also needing the butterflies to not only help pollinate within only a certain area, but over hundreds of miles. These connections are really important, right? And so butterflies themselves are considered to be really important organisms. They're considered to be indicator species. In other words, what happens to the one is an indication of what's going to happen to others in the same ecosystem. So they're very important. And what else do we know about these butterflies, including that of the monarch butterfly, is that they too are actually disappearing. They're actually getting lower and lower numbers, and people are starting to really worry about that. And so, in fact, there are some uh, studies, predictions, that a number of butterfly species are going to go extinct in the next couple of decades. So why are they disappearing also? 
So there's a number of hypotheses. One of these hypotheses is that it's climate change. Climate change is actually causing the demise of some of these butterflies. That climate change, uh, the butterflies can't take these extremes in um, weather conditions, and so they're, therefore they're dying off. Another hypothesis that is somewhat related to climate change is, well, their food supply the milkweeds, of which butterfly weed is one of the milkweeds, is disappearing. Isn't that what we're talking about here? The butterfly weed is disappearing. If the food supply disappears, then what's going to happen to the butterflies? They're going to go too. So there's another connection there, right? So talk about that very important relationship that butterfly weed and other milkweeds have with that of the butterflies. And so what's going on with the butterfly weed, right? That's what I'm interested in. So. Um, there are a number of hypotheses in terms of the butterfly weed. Number one, it, they too are being affected by climate change. Okay? And I have another hypothesis that is much a little more local. Okay? So, like I said, I've been studying the butterfly weed in this particular meadow at Marshlands Conservancy. Okay? So, on the left is just a picture of um, Westchester County. You're all probably all familiar with it. Okay, it's north of New York City. You can see the Hudson River um, on the west, and then you have Long Island Sound and the stars where I, uh, where I, New York is. Okay, on the right is actually a Google Earth map of Marshlands Conservancy. Marshlands Conservancy being right here. You can see it's surrounded by a bunch of residential areas. Okay, there's Rye Golf Course right there. Okay, and so most of Marshlands Conservancy is quite wooded. In other words, it's mostly forest. But you can see this rectangular area there. That's actually a mowed portion of the conservancy where they actually keep and manage a meadow. And that's where the butterfly weed is. Okay? So I've been um, uh, keeping track of the butterfly weed in this particular meadow. And this is what I found. And so I've been doing this over a number of years. Right? And so every single dot, and so this is just the top third of the meadow, every single little dot represents a particular butterfly weed that I identified. So you can see in 2003, there's a bunch of butterfly weed, 2004, a bunch of butterfly weed, 2005, a bunch of butterfly weed, but then there's this huge drop in butterfly weed between 2005 and 2008. In fact, over 1,000 in 2005 to just about 100 in 2008. 90% gone, and it's even getting worse in 2014. So what's going on? What's going on in terms of why the butterfly weed in this particular meadow, anyway, is disappearing? Well, when I actually take a look, this is what I see. So on the left, you can see beautiful butterfly weed plant in full flower at its best. On the right, however, this is what I would see a lot in 2008. In 2014, you can see the butterfly weed is there, but the tops have been completely cut off. Now, the other plants around that butterfly weed is, are fine. It's not as they have been completely uh, cut off as well. It's just the butterfly weed in which the tops have been cut off. And so my hypothesis is that something's been eating these guys, right? Something tall enough is just going to go ahead and reach in and just go ahead and eat the tops of these plants. So what is eating these plants, right? What organism is eating these plants? Well, there's only one herbivore that's tall enough and that's in abundance, right, in, at marshlands that are eating these plants. And my hypothesis is that it's deer, right? Now, deer... Um, it's been known, have been increasing in population over a number of years in Westchester County. And so here's another connection. Connection between deer and butterfly weed. Deer are eating the butterfly weed, no butterfly weed. What's going to happen to the butterflies? No butterflies. And so now we're connecting deer to butterflies. Connections that you never would have really thought about, right? Unless you actually really looked into it and studied it, right? But I'm not done yet, because what's causing the overpopulation of the deer? Who's responsible for allowing for the natural predators of the deer to no longer exist in this area in Westchester County? Well, who? We, yeah, we are, aren't we? Aren't we responsible for this overpopulation of deer? And now, because we have an overpopulation, deer are starting to eat the butterfly weed. No butterfly weed, no butterflies. And so now we have a connection. We have a connection again from us to butterflies, right? And so there's something that perhaps we can learn from studying just the one plant, the connections that we have. One final thought. Now, obviously, um, the study that I, studies that I just talked about, 
right? Won't cure some uh, human disease. But it actually turns out, right, those chemicals I talked about, those toxins, well, those chemicals, right, um, may actually have medicinal value because in colonial times, right, um, it, the butterfly we plant has actually been used as a traditional medicine to treat uh, lung and heart problems. And in fact, there are some scientists that are looking in related plants um, to see if they too have medicinal properties. And so perhaps studying butterfly weed can actually contribute to treating some sort of human disease. You never know, right? There's always something to be learned. Thank you.